let's start with iron ore. Um, basically, iron ore, for those that you, you're not aware, is, is a, a silvery grey metal when it's fresh, but it very quickly oxidises to a rusty red colour. Um, very typical. You've all seen uh, rust lots of different places in, uh, in Singapore where you live, and that's, that's the, the effects of iron. For those of you that with a chemistry bent, it has a chemical symbol of Fe, and you'll see that used um, regularly tonight, uh, this afternoon. Atomic weight of 50, nearly 56, and atomic number of 26. It was discovered 7,000 years ago, and has been fairly widely used for 5,000 years, but really only became um, a major contributor to industrialisation in the 14th century when smelting furnaces were developed. Pure iron, in its, in its purest form, is really quite soft. It's, it's not until you start to add impurities to it that give it the strength and the character that we fundamentally rely on for industrialisation uh, in today's world. It's the most common element in the earth. Um, it's, uh, it forms much of the earth's core, uh, and it's the fourth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. So the Earth is made up of the core and the crust, the outer crust area. Iron is the fourth most common element, but it's easily the most common element when you take the, the whole Earth up. It occupies, uh, it occurs in nature in very many forms, uh, and many, many minerals in the, in the Earth's um, crust and core contain some component of iron in their, in their uh, structure. But when we're looking to mine iron and in iron ore, it's fundamentally as an oxide um, and occasionally as a sulphide that we mine that. It's mined in very many countries, uh, as you would expect, it being um, so common. It's uh, found you know, virtually everywhere in the world to some degree and to some extent where it becomes uh, locally mined for local applications. Approximately 95% of iron ore is, is used in the production of steel and steel is just the backbone of industrialised society. It's also readily recyclable, and there's a, a major industry in terms of recycling iron uh, and scrap uh, to supplement the newly, newly mined material. Applications, fundamentally they're cast iron type applications as well as steel production. So the cast iron applications that you might see around the world, are pipes, fittings, engine blocks and things like that, but fundamentally um, steel is the most useful form of iron and accounts for 90% of all metal used in the world. And that's because it's strong, it's durable and it's versatile. When you start to add things like carbon plus some of the other metals, you've got chromium, manganese, nickel and molybdenum to, to that, then it's possible to make a whole range of different steels for different applications. And some of the applications could include engineering and building um, structures and applications. We, it's crucial for transportation, machinery, manufacture, and a lot of consumer goods that you've got in your home today uh, are, are made with iron as a, as a core. So it's, it's essential to um, the world as we know it today. Some of the examples that you'll see it in, buildings, vehicles, uh, Commercial applications, um, cans and tins and, and steel products, it's, it's just uh, basically throughout society, it's, it's a, a critical um, metal. In terms of production, there's some production statistics to, to show you uh, where the main production uh, countries are for the production of iron ore. And you can see there in 2011, 2012, that we're, it's really dominated by China. China is far and away the biggest producer of iron ore uh, on the planet. And uh, when you add up uh, China's production, it, it's still more than the next three biggest countries. And, and certainly Australia and Brazil are, are no minions when it comes to iron ore production. Uh, and then you've got India behind that. but. Uh, you know, when you look at the total production of China, it's still more than those next three biggest countries. You then go down to Russia at 100 million tonnes um, and um, then you know, a range of other countries that uh, produce smaller amounts. You can see there that uh, mine production in 2012 was 3 billion tonnes. So these numbers are all in millions. So that 3,000 there, add a million to that. So it's 3 billion tonnes of production last year. And crude ore reserves, if you look in the, in the third column, 170,000 um, million tonnes, uh, 170 billion tonnes. We have 
you know, approximately 60 years of reserves known at the present time based on the United States Geological Survey information. So iron ore, a lot of it is being produced, and we'll see the equivalent statistics shortly for nickel, and you'll see that, the, 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 that there's so much less nickel that's mined annually. Uh, and, and iron ore is, is clearly a, a, a crucial um, ingredient for today's society. Some background on, on pricing. This is the monthly spot prices in, in US dollars per dry metric tonne for the last 30 years. And you can see there it's been fairly stable for much of the, the last 20 years, sitting down at this level, generally speaking, less than $20 per tonne. And then um, around 2004, you can see this significant growth in the price of iron ore, um, reaching peaks of uh, close to $200 per tonne. Um, just before the GFC um, in you know, 2011, things like that, or actually that's after the GFC even. So you can see there that uh, you know, within a matter of four to five years, the price went from you know, less than $20 a tonne up to you know, of the order of $170, $180 a tonne. And a lot of that was the growth in the industrialization of China and then demand. So whilst China was the absolute leading producer of iron ore, it was also the leading importer of iron ore as well um, in terms of feeding their industrialisation programs. In the last six years, if we just now focus um, for the last five years, you can see there there's lots of swings and roundabouts. So it's still a very volatile metal in terms of, of the pricing of it. You can see that uh, it reached a, a low there of uh, just under $100 back in sort of August 2012. And um, within periods of months, um, you know, went back up again on either side of that to, you know, the order of $120 to $140. Quite significant movements in price, and you can guarantee that they, they cause lots of problems for producers when they're dealing with spot pricing and things like that. So you can see there for probably the last three and a half to four years, we've been sitting at, you know, maybe $130, $140 a tonne average price, but it's uh, certainly reasonably volatile and something to consider in terms of investment options for, for iron ore. Globally, um, you saw the statistics just in terms of a map. You can see there the, the big producers in, in red there. Um, you know, you've got China and Australia and Brazil, um, India, Russia, um, and South Africa is there as well. So, you know, that's the, all the, pretty well all countries have some form of iron. It's just a matter of whether or not is enough to justify mining. Um, clearly, there are some economies of scale associated with iron ore mining, so you know, it's a matter of deciding, do you have a big enough deposit and can you compete with the really big producers that can operate at fairly low prices? When we run out of iron ore in 60 years' time, then what? So, would it be better if we just let the iron ore stay in the ground in case of Australia and start mining it in 40 years' time at a very high price? What's your take on this? Um, I would stress that, that the, the reserves number there is, is correct, 60 years is what the current estimate is, but there, f for every, for every tonne in reserves, I would suggest that there's probably two, three or four tonnes that is not yet in reserves, that will come into reserves. And history, at least in, in this industry, tells us across every commodity, it's irrespective of which commodity you're dealing with, is that technology, uh, and our ability to extract minerals from rocks is improving all the time. And what we currently think is uneconomic right now will almost certainly be economic to process in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And so the things that we're throwing away today, we can, I can guarantee we'll be mining at a profit in the times when, when the current reserves have been exploited. Because Technical innovation is just a fantastic thing in the minerals industry in particular and, and um, I've been in the industry for 35 years now and the things that we do now for, and we take for granted now didn't exist even when, when I started and the type of deposits that we're able to exploit now we, you know, we wouldn't have even looked at 30 years ago. So it's, it's a constantly evolving situation. I, I wouldn't be too worried that we're going to run out of iron ore in the next 60 years.